All right guys, Pterodactyl here, and today I'm gonna to tell you about resources and resource nodes in Hell Let Loose. If you find this video useful, then please give it a like, subscribe for more. So just FYI, this was recorded at the beginning of April, 2021. And as this game is in early access, this information could change. So in Hell Let Loose, there are three different resources, munitions, manpower, and fuel. You can see how many munitions your team has by looking at the top of your map. You will see how many resources your team currently has and how many more resources you will get every 60 seconds. Resources are a key factor to victory in Hell Let Loose. If you have no resources, your commander cannot spawn tanks, they cannot call in bombing runs and they cannot use their abilities. Artillery will also run out of ammo. It's a bad idea to have no resources in this game. So let's take a look at each resource type and see how they affect the battle. First up is manpower. Manpower is depleted every time a player dies. This is either by being outright killed, such as a headshot or being exploded, or when they give up. Manpower can get to zero and players can still spawn in. Manpower is the first resource that you should build nodes for as manpower has the ability that increases the number of resources generated for all resources. Here are the abilities that use manpower. Establish Airhead. This costs 75 manpower and this allows the commander to deploy a temporary garrison from a plane anywhere on the map, even behind enemy lines. The airhead remains in place for three minutes. This is amazing for launching surprise attacks from the rear or the flanks. Dismantle Garrison. For 50 manpower, the commander can remove a friendly garrison from the map. Now you're probably wondering why you would do this. Well, there is an eight garrison limit for each team. So if you are near your cap and you need to build a garrison in the front lines, but there's no one near another friendly garrison to dismantle it, the commander can use this to dismantle it remotely. Reinforce. 30 manpower, this temporarily increases the capture power of all friendly sectors which makes your control points harder for the enemy to capture. Great to use in a pinch. Encouraged. This costs 30 manpower and allows any captured sectors to temporarily generate more resources. Final stand. This costs 30 manpower again and this stops your team from losing any resources for a short time. The commander can also swap 50 manpower for 30 fuel or 30 munitions. So without manpower, you lose the ability to generate more resources for a time to make defending points a bit easier and to establish the airhead which can turn a game around. Next, let's look at munitions. Munitions are used for every single round an artillery gun or anti-tank gun emplacement will fire and for some commander abilities. For artillery, it costs five munitions for one smoke round and three for one HE round. For the anti-tank gun emplacement, it's five munitions per shot. The commander abilities that use munitions are Supply Drop. This costs 15 munitions and this allows the commander to drop 100 supplies down onto a specific location. Recon Plane. For 25 munitions, this calls in a recon plane down in a specified direction that will show the location of enemy soldiers and vehicles to squad leaders and a recon squad. Strafing. This costs 50 munitions and lets the commander call down a plane to perform a strafing run using its machine guns. And the bombing run for 75 munitions and this calls down a bombing run on a location and the bombing run can be used to destroy enemy fortifications, garrisons and resource nodes. They can also swap 50 munitions, or 30 fuel or 30 manpower. So without munitions, you won't be getting artillery which can devastate the enemy you won't get the anti-tank gun emplacements firing and you will lack an area clearing bombing run and more. And lastly, we have fuel. Without fuel, you will have no tanks and no trucks. If you have no tanks in this game, you're going to get destroyed and you need your trucks, especially the supply truck, to quickly bring lots of supplies to the front line. On the allied side, the commander can spawn in a Sherman Jumpo 76mm tank for 100 fuel the Sherman Jumbo 75mm for 85 fuel, the transport and supply truck for 15 fuel, and the recon vehicle, the M8 Greyhound, for 30 fuel. 
they can also swap 50 fuel for 30 manpower or munitions. The Axis side can spawn in a Tiger 1 for 100 fuel, the Panther for 60, the trucks for 15 fuel each, and their recon vehicle, the Puma, for 30 fuel. They can also swap 50 fuel for 30 manpower or munitions. So, without fuel, the commander won't be able to spawn in the tanks and the vehicles. This is the only way you can get extra tanks throughout the battle, so you need to have fuel. So, as you can see from how the resources are used, it is very important that you get more. You need your artillery guns to keep on shooting, you need your commander to keep using their abilities, and you need your tanks to keep rolling in. These abilities can change the shape of battle. So do your commander a favour and get more resources. But how do you do this? Firstly, you may not even realise this happens, but by capturing objectives you will start generating more resources. Each point on the map will have a symbol, and this symbol relates to one of the resources. Once you capture this point, you will start getting more resources for this type. Capturing a point generates three resources for that type every 60 seconds. The next and best way to generate resources is with the engineer role. The engineer can build a resource node for each type. Your team can only have four nodes of each type for a total of 12 nodes, and one engineer can build all of these. However, you cannot build nodes of the same type within 50 meters of another. To be able to build nodes, an engineer needs supplies. A friendly support soldier can either drop these, a commander can drop these from the sky, or a supply truck can drop big supply crates. Each resource node will cost 50 supplies. They can only be built in captured territory. Nodes can be dismantled by friendly and enemy players. So if you see any enemy nodes, then dismantle them. However, dismantling nodes will take 30 seconds per node, and generally nodes are built next to other nodes. So you could be sat there for a minute and a half or longer dismantling the nodes if you wanted. Or you can place a satchel charge that will destroy them all. A commander's bombing run will also take them out. And like garrisons and outposts, if you lose the territory they are built in, they will automatically dismantle themselves. Before update 9, nodes would not automatically dismantle, so it could be possible that this changes again in a future patch. The key to building these nodes is the location. You cannot place nodes in your HQ sector, and you can only build them in friendly sectors. The first sector you can build them in will generate 5 resources every 60 seconds. The second one will be 10, and the third, 15. So it's an extra five resources for the next sector going forward. So you've got to balance the risk v reward and take into account that you can dismantle friendly nodes so you can build them further up the map, therefore generating more resources. So I hope all this information has helped you out. It's quite a bit to take in, but the main thing to remember is that resources are important. Get those nodes built and take out enemy nodes. You can always spawn as an engineer just to build the nodes and then change to a different role. If you like the video, then give it a like, subscribe for more, and come check out my live streams here on the channel as well. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.